Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with your monthly ish industry update and kicking off the new year, we might be kicking off a new landscape in the RV industry. There are potentially some major shakeups happening with RV manufacturers that may drastically change uh, a lot of things down to the, to, to the brands that are available out there and where you can find them. Also, there are multiple different factors that may be coming down the pipeline, which might result in multiple layers of price relief. And we're going to be diving into some interest rates with some predictions that might be happening there, along with a little bit of an outlook on other things that might be happening later in the year. Now, Due to the holidays and how my schedule got broken up, I had to change the way that I recorded this video today. Instead of recording it all in one shot, I may be doing multiple different segments on multiple different days. So if I go through a couple clothing and costume changes, that's what's going on. But to help you, I will continue to chapter mark this video so you can jump around to the, the things that you like and continue to drop your comments on what you think and share this video into like things like your favorite Facebook groups if you find something useful or value or something that somebody else might uh, find some enjoyment out of. I don't know. In the meantime, let's get rolling because I'm only halfway through the month as I started this and there's already a lot of big stuff to hit on. All right, so first of all, this is something where I don't yet have a lot of specifics, but I'm trying to kind of lay the groundwork and the precursor there so that maybe you have a little bit of an idea what you're going to see and know how to interpret it as the year rolls on. Long story short, the, the, the names in the RV industry might be changing and some brands might be going away. Some brands are getting absorbed into other brands. Uh, basically, there's massive manufacturer consolidation out there. Now, I don't necessarily think that's a, a bad idea. There have been, there's so many names in the RV industry. There's so many brands and they're all, if you ask anybody, they're all the best. You know what I mean? You can go to any salesperson at any RV show and say, how does your RV compare to the RV next door? You'll never run into somebody who says, yeah, their campers are better than mine. No, they're always going to say theirs is better somehow. They're all cool in different ways. But the thing is, there's a lot of multiplicity, there's a lot of duplicity, there's a lot of overlap, and there's a lot of things that are just superfluous fluff products out there. And they've begun to struggle in the current uh, nature and volume of the RV market. Well, manufacturers aren't going to sit there supporting a brand that's losing money, that isn't selling, because it costs a lot of money just to keep those factory lines up and running. So what you're seeing happen here is there are multiple RV brands that are either just going to be scratched off the board entirely and they're done, they're retired from production, or there might be some things that are absorbed into other brand names. But th this, uh, this trend is interesting because there are some RV brands that were ultra popular only five or six years ago that are really sucking wind right now. And there's a lot of rumors swirling around the Michiana area right now that some of these names are just gonna get axed and going to get cut. And I, it makes business sense to me, some of them. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about this is what is happening, not just in terms of brand management, but at the actual manufacturing level. Because as the market has evolved, some brand divisions have really succeeded and stayed healthy and profitable, and some have struggled. Um, I don't again have hard details yet. I'll continue to watch this and share information with you over time so you kind of know what you're getting into. But um, it, there's, there's huge family trees in the RV industry. Like um, I was talking to someone the, uh, the other day. So there's like, they, they, they were blown away. They didn't realize that like Keystone and, and Jayco were, were members of the Thor family of RVs because Jayco and Keystone also have their own subsidiaries. Like Jayco is the parent company over like Integra, Starcraft, Highland Ridge. Um, Keystone is the parent company over Dutchman and Crossroads. Like they were, they didn't realize it was like that involved. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of evidence to support right now that some of those subsidiaries are going to be more fully absorbed. Where some of those subsidiaries maybe make like 12 brands of campers, but maybe three or four are actually successful, popular, and profitable. Well, it's very possible that in, in some of these cases, you will see some of those subsidiaries, like eight or nine of their brands go away, and that subsidiary's name go away and be absorbed into the parent company, which will streamline a lot of, a lot of accounting processes. And one of my hopes with this are things like warranty processes, you know, because 
Something that folks are just not aware of is, is just how much of a pain in the neck the warranty processes are from a dealership level. It's just not clean, simple, and easy the way it could or should be. Uh, so I'm hoping that they can focus in on more staff with less lines to do things better. The other thing that I find very interesting is for the first time I think almost in my career, I'm actually starting to hear a major push for quality improvement from the upper echelons of some of these manufacturers. And I don't think I'm much different than you. When I start hearing, oh, we're gonna improve quality from, from a lot of the RV industry, I, I kind of roll my eyes because I've been hearing that for a long time. And some brands do better and some brands don't. And I've always tried to be very real about that. Um, but take a, take a look at this. Now, I get that it looks like, it feels like you're looking at an, a, a document from a government agency that's been heavily redacted. You know what I mean? Um, this was sent to me in extreme confidence by somebody that probably should not have sent this to me, and I'm not going to cause them to lose their job or anything like that. But long story short, from the very upper echelons of a very major RV manufacturer, the head honcho has flat thrown down the gauntlet and said, other companies are building things uh, better than us in a lot of cases. Get your quality up or I will close your division, period. And that guy will do it. <laughs> that, that guy will do it. So, this is very interesting to me, and it's very exciting. But, like, it's one of those things where you've been once bit, twice shy, you know? I really... It, it, the RV industry could produce better things than they do. Um, like, the example that I like to use is, like, uh, some of these keyless entry door pads on RVs, for instance. They're okay, but they're problematic. They're better than they used to be. But, um... Like a keyless entry door pad on like a Ford or whatever vehicle. If you're not a Ford fan, that's fine. I'm not trying to like start a revolution here. Um, maybe they fail, but rarely, but rarely. I know of one person ever who's had a problem with their keyless entry door pad on their Ford vehicle. I know a lot of people that have had problems with their keyless entry door pads on, on RVs. And I know a lot of people who would say, I would gladly pay a little bit more if you'd just give me a better thing like slam latches instead of those crappy uh, twist latches or something like that. I am really hopeful the RV industry finally, finally progresses forward a little bit. Um, but we're not there yet. I'm, I'm hopeful. And again, I will continue to kind of keep my ear to the ground on this and let you know, like, as different brands come and go or evolve, I'll do my best to try to put that information out there for you in future updates. So maybe subscribe, keep an eye on that, or just, hey, thanks, nerd, for giving you a, a quick heads up on some of the stuff that might be happening. So beyond that, um, what's in store for 24? Well, last month, uh, I, I talked about how an industry veteran, Mr. Greg Four, kind of predicted that last year, the, the 2023 calendar year's um, downward trend in terms of overall volume and production would continue through 2024 calendar year. Um, RVIA has uh, recently released their predictions. RVIA, the uh, RV Industry Association, basically, um, the, kind of the big governing body over the RV industry. They just re uh, released their report and, and their predictions, and they're kind of predicting the opposite. So, Again, I'm trying to share multiple perspectives and let you decide what you want to do. I'm just trying to share the information that I find. Anyway, RVIA is projecting in the 2024 calendar year, there will be something in the neighborhood of 307 to 350,000 RV shipments produced through the year. They are expecting the second half of the year to be a little bit stronger than the first half of the year. Um, they're kind of estimating that based on some trends that might happen with interest rates that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but that would mean roughly a 12 to 16% increase uh, versus the 2023 calendar year versus the year prior. Um, and there have been a couple different parties that are projecting roughly about a 14% uptick for the RV industry in the, in the 2024 calendar year this year. Uh, I keep forgetting it's December at the time that I'm recording this and I'm trying to think forward. Um, squirrel! Anyway. Uh, it seems like the only consistency in the information that I get is about 14%. People seem to think it's either up 14% or down 14%. So I guess I'm curious. Do you think it's gonna be up or down 14%? <laughs>
some of the factors that are fueling that um, maybe prediction of a bit of an uptick there is I have stumbled into three potentially significant ways we may see levels of pricing relief uh, in the RV industry for the 2024 year. Um, the first of which is actually going to come in uh, the form, oh, potentially, it, it's basically up for review right now. There's been proposed legislation that would ease tariffs on things like uh, the import of Luan. Hello. Ooh, that sun feels so warm and good, but I'm also getting blinded by the light over here. Um, but um, I really wanted to throw a revved up in the deuce, another runner in the night concept in there, but I guess I just did. Regardless, I'm sorry. The, uh, the in, in 2020, there was some legislation that basically ended, which uh, placed additional tariff money on the import of things like Luon. And if you think about Luon wood wall paneling, I mean, it's used in walls, floors, roofing, and most of the mainstream RV industry uses it somewhere. The stuff is like, you can't get away from it basically. But because those tariff reliefs essentially ended and things changed, the RV industry as a whole was absorbing about a 1.5 million additional dollars per month since the beginning of 2020. That is one of those factors that very quickly increased the cost of RVs. It's also one of the reasons you saw a huge bloom in the use of Asdell, because Asdell used to be significantly more expensive than Luon, and once it quit being significantly more expensive than Luon, manufacturers said, well, we might as well use that nicer thing because it costs basically the same and people would rather have it anyway. So um, it is possible. There's bipartisan legislation that's been proposed right now uh, to basically put huge relief on things like that and when the the raw material costs go down when the bill cost goes down when the, the the invoice goes down your price tag goes down so i'm very hopeful that happens and the fact that it's bipartisan gives me at least a little more of a feel that this thing actually has a chance now it's not approved yet at the time that i'm recording this hopefully that's something that gets through and allows us all a little bit of uh relief on the price tags of these things all the way through the entire process there's also another th bit of legislation out there that's currently in the works that may provide additional relief. Basically, there were some unintentional changes to the verbiage in certain tax codes that prevented dealerships from deducting the interest they uh, have to uh, accrue on the floor plan of their loan. So like this unit sitting behind me here, that Jayco or that Catalina behind it or whatever, um, most dealerships basically have an open revolving door loan uh, where they have to pay interest the longer that thing sits there. Um, normally, uh, they, they have the ability to potentially deduct that interest uh, at the end of the year when it comes time for the tax ban to wash everything out. But there were some weird changes to some verbiage that prevented specifically travel trailer interest generated at RV dealerships off their floor plan dollars from being or, uh, deducted from certain tax codes. And when you think about it, travel trailers is by far and away the largest segment of the RV industry. That had a major, major impact. That's one of the things that has really been hurting a lot of dealerships who didn't read the market correctly, didn't scale their inventories down very well, and ended up with too much inventory too heavily. Um, and a lot of the bank interest was really, really hurting them. It's uh, one of the things that will be a factor in the consolidation uh, topic that we're gonna hit on in a few minutes here. But there's legislation coming through that may resolve that, that could significantly lower the operating cost of dealerships. And if they can get by without spending as much money, that means that they can get by charging less money and i think all of us would like to see that happen again and the third thing here that may give us some relief is yet still a little bit speculative none of this stuff is yet set in stone i'm going to try to keep an eye on it and i recommend you do the same if you're curious or interested is there's some uh reasonable speculation that we may see some interest rate relief uh through the 2024 calendar year some of that is more expected hit in the second half of the year that's one of the reasons rvia is thinking we might see a little bit stronger second half because by that point a lot of these factors that we've been hitting on will have had time to sort of churn through the mechanism basically and start happening and, and being visible and effective and, and and functioning in the rv industry but a lower you know lower interest rates in general i mean we talked about rv dealership um interest rate floor plan dollar cost that's that's a huge huge factor that can be tens of thousands of dollars um, monthly very very quickly for each individual store now you start thinking in, of places that have multiple locations that adds up so painfully fast um, also the more direct obvious thing for you the consumer 
maybe lower interest rates on your loan. That's a major, major factor. But there are folks who have like um, adjustable rate mortgages that could give them some cost of living relief. You know, the cost of just any business doing business can tend to go down in that way. And as a result, you tend to get um, more flowing money, lower overall pricing on things. And it could be a huge factor, not just in the RV industry, but just in our daily lives. So hopefully that comes to pass. But again, with anything, there are some folks saying, we don't think we're going to see any relief on interest rates for a while yet. Well, time will certainly tell, but these are kind of the leaves that are in the tea currently. Also another kind of barometer factor for the RV industry, the Tampa RV show uh, this month in January is you know getting slated to happen middle of the month right there. I, I, I thought I'd kind of tackle this. A lot of people ask, hey, are you gonna be at the Tampa show? I, I go where my team goes. We don't currently have a place in Florida. Trust me, I'd much rather be in that warmer weather than where I'm at currently, but no, I, I won't personally be there. We won't personally be there. Um, but that show, since it's one of the first major shows uh, for the RV industry every year tends to be often looked at as a little bit of a barometer factor. Um, you know, how many people attend, how sales look, things like that. Um, what I can tell you is all of the new model, like you've already seen so many new floor plans come out on this channel and there's a bunch that I haven't been able to get to yet can expect to see that trend continue and expect Tampa to be another big new floor plan, new model uh, kind of showcase for a lot of people. Um, actually, I've, I've been very blessed. I've uh, had a lot of manufacturers reach out. I've had early access to a lot of these things. So if you're kind of curious to know what new stuff might be coming out, you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to kind of keep in the loop on the new models and new things that might be coming out. If you haven't found a floor plan that exactly fits you, never know, maybe something's coming. But I'm kind of curious, like we talked about interest rates, sales, this, this show attendance. What, what are your predictions for the industry this year in the 2024 calendar year? It'd be kind of interesting to look back at the comments on this video in like December and see how things really played out. Something I can guarantee you're going to see play out through this year are a continued trend of RV dealership and probably campground consolidations, but specifically dealerships. So coming into, uh, in, in the pre-COVID phase, um, it was a successful time in the RV industry. Actually, what's funny is even though that the volume of the industry then wasn't even what it is now, dealerships and manufacturers in general looked at it one another and said, boy, if we, we get, get three or four, four more years, years like this, this you know, we'll, we'll never, never ask, ask for another thing. thing. And then the RV industry got very financially good. Um, obviously, there were some things that should have been built better in that time, but the financial aspects of the RV industries became very positive. Um, thing is, even though times were very good in that 2018-19 era, there were still an interesting number of, you kind of call them mom and pop dealerships, that were kind of struggling. And they were uh, having a hard time um, keeping themselves financially healthy. And there were a lot of places that were probably on the brink of having to close their doors. Um, the pandemic era allowed a lot of these places to become profitable again and successful temporarily. But as that has kind of fizzled out, there's a lot of places that are suddenly <clears throat> basically in financial dire straits. Uh, it's created an unbelievable market for dealership consolidation. And there, there's some groups that are absolutely taking advantage of it. And that's not a criticism. That's just, that's just business. You know, uh, uh, the, um, the thing is that's not going to change. Um, it has slowed down a little bit, but I think we're about to see another little spike in it because there are some of these places that were kind of struggling. The, the market in the industry was good enough through the 2023 main selling season that a lot of places were able to kind of stay hung on. But through the winter season, a lot of places have really struggled. And some of these bigger groups are uh, almost taking the stance of approaching and saying, listen, we know you're in trouble. Um, we can buy you out and bail you out at your discretion and you can bow out of this thing gracefully, probably for pennies on the dollar, you know, or we can hang out three or four months and watch you completely go broke and go under and then buy your place back from the bank. It's your choice. And some places are jumping on board with that. There are some places that are absolutely signing the dotted line. And again, that's not a critique, that's not a criticism, that's just a reality. That's just a thing that is happening. And don't expect that trend uh, to change anytime soon. I think, especially through the first half of 2024 this year, we're going to probably see a lot of notices where uh, dealership XYZ is now joining or bought by or whatever. 
I don't think that's going to change. And I haven't really looked at campground consolidations lately, but last I knew the same thing was happening there. I'd be kind of curious. Have you seen uh, your local store, some place that you know of, um, has the name changed recently? Leave me a little comment. Let me know, like, whereabouts and, and what things changed to. Just kind of curious to see, like, kind of how directly that's sort of hitting our audience here. Now, a question I get almost every day is, hey, Josh, when's the best time to buy an RV? And it's always a moving target. There's never, like, always buy during this season. Like, there's not an answer like that. It's very subjective. Uh, it changes. But if you're looking to shop for a used RV, now might be a very good time to start looking at that a little bit before the season starts. Take a look at the charts here. If you notice in both towable and motorized used auction value trends, wholesale value trends, for like four months in a row, the used RV market values have been going down. The cost of a used RV has been going down. And uh, that's not unusual in the cold uh, months of the year, but we're coming into that time where we're about to enter RV show season. We just talked about the Tampa RV show. That's gonna be like the kickoff of about two to three solid months of a ton of RV shows. Like there's some months with all of our different vicious stores, and we're not the biggest organization by any means, but there are, are some multiple weeks where we have four major events happening at different stores across the nation all at the same time. Well, when that happens, yes, a lot of a lot of that focuses on new RVs, but there's a lot of people looking for used RVs. And we actually have specific used RV shows periodically. Um, well, right now there's a nice buildup of used RVs and there's a lot of places like there's some stores in the, in the, the cold sections of the country that just flat shut down during the cold months of the year they flat go into hibernation there's some stores coming out of hibernation there's some stores who haven't had a lot of cash flow that are looking to stay alive there's some stores that just want to start rolling their dollars again that are that are in fine financial condition but like they'd like to see some business happening and they'll take a couple they'll take a ham sandwich instead of a whole hog if you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, with a nice buildup of this and with uh, a, a, a nice chunk of places really looking to generate some business, um, you could really consider really more actively shopping for a used RV right now because in a couple months, a lot of the really prime picks are going to be picked off. And that's the trick with like the used RV market. If, in the new market, you can always just build another one. In the used market, it's a grab bag of what's available right now. So if you are thinking of like a March, April kind of camping excursion, but you were looking at the used market, you may consider stepping that up a little bit. You might be surprised with what you find out there. And in kind of a sad turn of events, um, Encore RV, who's a smaller manufacturer who makes a little bit more specialized, um, lightweight, little kind of campers, recently suffered a pretty major uh, facility fire. So they have multiple different shops, but basically they're weld shops. Something happened basically overnight and um, the weld shop was effectively a total loss. The, the local uh, fire teams that, that showed up, they were able to keep the major damage contained to that welding shop. Again, that was a total loss, but the main production facility uh, seems like it was able to survive. And uh, like the office spaces, although there's some smoke damage and some soot here and there, uh, are, are gonna be able to make it through. Um, it's really a bummer, but uh, there's some interesting things that I saw here. A lot of, places would just kind of take some insurance money and run. Encore is kind of doubling down and they're actually committing to keeping their uh, employees paid and employed during that time through the holiday season. And I think that's that's really cool. Now, I don't think Bish's RV carries them anywhere, but my hat's off to Encore. I like to just give credit where it's due. Something else that's cool, I don't have a lot of specifics, but other major manufacturers around the area have offered various levels of help, which is actually just really cool to see the RV community kind of pull through to help one another, even in the case of a competitor. And um, it's just it's just a nice little bit of feel good. It's a silver lining to a, a little bit of a cloud, but um, be kind of curious to see how Encore pulls through this. And I'd, any Encore owners out there watching this, how do you like your rigs? I don't know much about them. I'd be kind of curious to know what you think. And maybe a, another little glimmer of hope for the potential future of RV service in the RV industry. I've been very, uh, you know, candid and, and outspoken about this. I've even used the phrase that I, I think that there is many aspects of the service side of this industry that are just flawed on a fundamental level. But that doesn't mean that we're stuck with that. It, it does mean, though, that we have to dig ourselves out of a hole. So uh, one of the, the major challenges in this, like we've talked, I've talked about how, like, 
manufacture processes and repair event times and like how dealerships spend so much time waiting on parts to get there and sometimes they're the wrong parts or they show up damaged like that's uh, shockingly frequent but one of the other major hiccups with this industry is the number of really well properly trained certified technicians. Uh, I, I don't know that it's a, a, a well-known thing that the industry overall does lack in that regard. Like if you wanna get Ford service done at a Ford store or d Ram trucks, I don't care, you get the idea. I, I'm not Ford specific. It's just the one that always pops on my mind first. Like those people are trained pretty well on what they do. They have special diagnostics and like that stuff doesn't necessarily really exist in the RV industry, but it doesn't mean that no one's trying. Like a lot of times what a dealership has to do, a lot of dealerships have one or two like real true master certified train technicians, but then they also have a collection of people who um, like you have one guy who's good with cabinets and woodworking and you try to coach him up and you try to help teach him something else like hitching or you have a guy who's good with hitching and you try to teach him something else or you have an electrician who you try to teach you get the idea I'm sorry uh, the the point is we don't have enough people who are really well trained specifically on RVs all around but that is beginning to shift thanks largely to the efforts of the RV Technical Institute, RVTI. I have talked about them in the past. I continue to give them a uh, tip of the metaphorical hat because this one doesn't have a brim. Um, they are continuing to train more and more people. And this last year, the 2023 calendar year, saw the, the largest number of new train certified techs out there. More training programs, more courses, more information. And um, we now have in the industry more actual certified technicians than we've ever had before. Now, we still have, I, I, I think, not nearly enough, but we are getting there. And the, the, it, the, 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 the more people that we get with those certifications in the industry, the more employers start to look for that, the more that that starts to be a thing that people need. Or uh, dealerships, employers, whoever can um, uh, start to like, okay, when they hire that guy who needs that coaching up, we send him to those, those training courses to get those things done. That's something that we've done here quite a few times in the past, but I, I bet there's very few stores in the entire nation whose uh, all of their techs have actually gone through like real true RV course training. Um, I don't like that. But again, just because I don't like it doesn't mean I'm going to conveniently fail to talk about it and smokescreen you. I do hope you appreciate again that relentless pursuit of transparency that we offer in these videos. We're a long ways off, but it's step by step new kids on the block style. Ooh, baby, we are beginning to get there and I really hope that trend continues. And the EPA has recently announced that they're looking into something that could have widespread impact, not just on the RV industry, but basically our modern North American lives. Uh, you know, because I figure I got a lot of uh, Canadian viewers on here and a couple from across the pond. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. But long story short, they're investigating the use of PVC and whether it should be additionally restricted or potentially banned entirely. Now, before you have an immediate panic over this, I'm not trying to incite that. Uh, this is a year long process to review. There's a lot of steps that go into this. Um, where they're at right now is, is basically PVC, uh, vinyl chloride, was identified as a human carcinogen back in 1974. And it was banned from use in things like uh, hairsprays, deodorants, etc. you know, because it poisons people. Well, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, uh, is used in a lot of other applications, but uh, they're, they're investigating whether some of these are deemed like human safe and especially the disposal of discarded PVC materials uh, and potential environmental impact that it may or may not be having. Again, this is going to take a long time, but when I say that it could have a widespread impact, I mean, not only do the, the obvious things in RVs, like, uh, you know, your PVC roof membranes, like that's, that's an easy one, but to give you an idea, uh, this stuff is used all over the place in our households and our lives and our vehicles all the way down to the squeaky rubber chicken that uh, some of us have in the basement. I will tell you, I thought it was really fun and funny because my daughter th belly laughed when we first got her one when she was younger. And about the, 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 the third day in a row that I'm here, I, um, I did the, uh, the dad thing. 
where as soon as she leaves the room, it goes on top of the refrigerator, where she couldn't reach it and couldn't find it anymore, and we just uh, substituted that with some other distraction. But that's a dad hack, by the way, in case you ever wanted. Uh, here's another one. You might find that your kids don't like green beans, but if you feed them Ninja Turtle fries, they just might. So I began recording these different video segments in like the middle of December, and I already had to edit some things out, which normally you'll find, I, I don't tend to edit my videos real hard, but I already had to peel some things out because, again, the landscape and environment in the industry, especially from the manufacturer side of things, is changing so readily and so drastically that some of the information I had has already changed in real time. Right now, there's a lot of, hey, we've heard this is happening. So like if I call my Keystone contacts, they've heard this is happening over at Forest River. Well, I tend to try to take things straight from the horse's mouth. It is, there's no question, there's major, major shakeups going to happen. And when I get real clarity and confirmation of those, I'll make sure to put that information out in future updates like this. So if you like how we're putting this out there for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can do the best I can to try to keep you in the loop and keep you in tune with things. Because uh, it sounds like the first quarter of this coming year, it's going to get a little bit rocky. It kind of sounds like the second half of the year, it's going to smooth out a little bit better. And along the way, I want to help educate you so that you understand what the environment looks like um, and if it is or maybe is not the right time for you to get into an RV. Uh, because I'm not the one that decides that. I want to give you the information and let you decide. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button. Maybe share this video in your favorite Facebook group or whatever you enjoy. You know, if you're not a Facebooker, that's fine. I know that that's that jelly in everyone's jam. But as long as you keep wanting to hear the information, I'll keep putting these out. So let me know what you want to find out, and I'll do my best to dig into it. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.